Hey YouTube, welcome back. I am Faja and this is HO Scale Model Railroader. Uh, hopefully you watched part one of the video series. This is part two. If you didn't see part one, there should be a little link appearing right up here in a moment. Uh, go watch that one and then come back and watch this one or, you know, do your own thing. But anyway, uh, what we're basically concentrating on doing is taking this old box car and turning it into this box car. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, well in part one of the video series, we uh, covered disassembly of the project car removing the old paint and decals and preparing uh, to uh, to paint the new color. In this video we're going to talk about painting on the new color, uh, prepping uh, for the application of decals, uh, applying decals, setting decals, and reassembly. So uh, come along with us as uh, we uh, take this little car and uh, breathe some new life into it. All right? Okay, as mentioned before we're going to be using CSX Blue um, it's made by Faux Quill. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? And see how I'm just going backwards and forth, painting it right down the side. And then I'll start at the bottom, and I'll work my way back up. Okay, that side's done. And then we're going to come this way and we're going to tilt it up and start. And notice we're getting at the up angles down to the bottom, back up to the top. Now we'll rotate again and we'll start again. Now remember, if you can hear me, Remember, you're not trying to paint the entire car completely done this time. You're probably going to have to do two coats. If you put too much paint on, it's going to run. Uh, if you don't put enough on, you won't be able to see it. There's just a fine balance. Don't become frustrated if, uh, if you don't get it right the first time. Okay, now we're continuing our up angles. Okay, now we've got the sides. Now we're going to go for the top. Again, the key here is to put the top at an angle under your light so you get a shine on it. And normally here, uh, what I'll do is I'll do a side like this and then go to the other side. I'm going to come over to the edge. I'm going to come back to the top. Can you see that? Now I'm going to rotate it over here. Okay, nice and blue. Alright, so I'm looking at it now. Now keep in mind, you've got these ridges, and spraying this way is not going to get the inside of the ridge. So if I, if I was spraying into this spray booth this way, I'd get everything this way, but I wouldn't get this or this. If you have ridges on it, not too heavy, not too heavy, start at the bottom and get off a good little distance, and go up one side of the ridge, back down the other side of the ridge, tilt it back at you and do the same thing again. Okay, good to go. All right, now, okay, so here's our little brown box car that's slowly turning blue. All right, so here we go. We're gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna do basically the same thing. We're gonna spray this way, then we're gonna rotate them and spray the other way. All right. Now this right here, it's not going to be bothering you too much. It's really not an, enough to have to get a body motion in, but you can. All right, so we got that. We got to take it down. So what we're going to do, real careful, like we're going to pull the tape up. We're going to rotate it this way. 
Now we're going to go up and down this way. Oh, it moved. Okay, there's that. Now we're going to move it this way. And we're going to get this side. Okay. And then finally we're going to rotate it this way. Because I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me... Uh... If you look right here, you can see the brown showing through because the grab iron on that catwalk is preventing the brown, the paint from getting over there. And if you look right here on the door, you can see on this side, it still looks brown. So uh, that's what we're going to work on here in just a minute. We're going to put another coat on these and uh, we should be done with this car for, oh, about 30 or 40 minutes. Starting off over here. Back in here. Alright, now last thing and something I forgot a while ago. Bring this in so hopefully you can see it. Notice on this car right here, if you can see them, the tits and the tip down here on the side this are the ones that go into the holes that protrude from the side of the shell so we want to because they're going to stick out because they're going to stick out and we don't want them black we need to put a little paint on them too okay so now we got the uh, trucks off what i'm going to do is just go ahead and spray this entire frame that way if there's anything sticking out on the edges once we get it put back together it'll be good to go this would be a good time to put on a, a pair of gloves I need you to step into my office, please. Ah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna move this out of the way so we don't get any overspray on it, because that's our main piece. Okay, looks good. All right, we're going to let this sit for another 30 minutes and uh, see how it turns out. Okay, welcome back. Now we're nice and dry. We're over here. We're taking a look at the car. Taking a look at it, looking for any wet spots. Now I want you to notice, if you will, how shiny it is right here. That's because we've got a nice, dry paint job on this old boy or old girl what we're doing right now is we're giving it the final once over before we put on the dull coat sorry if I'm stammering kind of in the conversation here but I am actually looking at it to make sure that it's good to go and it does. It appears like uh, she's ready to go on to the next step. Okay, as I mentioned before, when we got ready to uh, uh, start painting uh, the blue paint onto the bare shell, I mentioned that we were going to use Dull Coat, number 1260 by Testers. And we use this because, just like this label here is nice and smooth, uh, it has no... Uh, it's not porous. It doesn't have any micro pores in it for anything to stick to. So, you know, if you put a drop of water on it, it's going to run right off. Uh, the plastic lid is a little more porous. So if you put a drop of water on that, it, it would probably run off, but not as quickly because the, the, the porous part of the plastic has something for the paint to stick to. So because it was all nice and smooth, we put dull coat on it. Now, we're getting ready to put stickers on. We don't want the stickers or excuse me we don't want the decals to uh have a porous area to stick to and you're like well, what does that mean we'll do that later and i'll explain but when you put them on you want them to go on something very smooth and you want them to go on and be able to slide around because 
when you when we take them off the decals and we drag the decal paper out from under uh, the decal uh, we want to be able to move that decal around to get it in the right spot we so we want it to move very easily we we, we don't want no resistance we want to turn we want to turn down as much resistance as possible when we're putting these decals on because they never come off the paper straight and sometimes they'll fold back over on you and they'll double over on you and they'll give you a pain but I'll show you how to do it but what we want to do first is we want to take some testers number um, 1261 gloss coat actually this is gloss coat uh, luster and what we're going to do is we're going to spray the sides of the car now I'm sure the car is already smooth but we're going to make it super smooth so when we start moving these decals apart they don't rip apart or when we start moving these decals around they don't rip apart so let's go ahead and uh, shoot the sides of the box car now and the ends where the uh, decals are going to go we'll get it dried and then we'll move on to the fun part Yay! Alright, we got that on. Again, not too heavy. And then the ends. Okay, it's about uh, 4 o'clock. We've been working on this little project here since about 9... 8 30 9 o'clock this morning breathing too many fumes i'm having a really good time yeah anyway um what we're going to do now is let this set up ideally in a perfect world we would let it set up overnight don't rush it all right see you back uh when i get back 30 minutes maybe tomorrow bye okay so here's my little uh work area where i like to uh do my decaling at Whenever possible, I like to have a picture of the prototype on my computer as a reference chart. It can come in real handy uh, in figuring out where the placements of the letters need to be. Behind that, I have the instructions that come with the decals themselves. We're going to be using uh, HO scale 87-1337 uh, 50-foot uh, CSX outside braced boxcars. Now, there's some of you purists out there, don't send me hate mail, okay? This is my layout. It's not a braced box car that we're working on. It's just an example to show people how to put decals on. Okay, now we're going to take a look at Microset, which is in the blue bottle, and Microsol, which is in the red bottle. Microset is your setting solution. You apply this onto the painted surface prior to putting the decal on. It softens the decal and it improves the adhesion of the decal. Microsol in the red bottle is also a setting solution, but it's designed to soften the decal to conform to irregular surfaces to give you a more painted on look. It'll wrap around rivets and uh, frames and metal and whatnot. Sometimes it takes more than one uh, application to work. Here is my work mat and uh, on it I got my pick. We've already talked about how much I love this pick. I have an X-Acto with a, a brand new sharp blade in it uh, because you, when you go to cut these decals, some of them can be very small and you don't want any jagged edges ripping into the decal. I also have my tweezers. I have a small quantity of uh, warm water. I have uh, some uh, uh, Q-tips. We've talked about how much I love those. And as we start to get into the uh, applying of the microsol and the microset, you'll see how handy these things are. Slightly off camera, you got a magnifying glass. I'm an old guy. Some of these decals are so small, you won't even believe it. So, uh, just to be on the safe side, grab a magnifying glass. And I have a desk lamp, which puts a nice glare, a lot of light over my decals, so I can see where the decals break on the backing paper prior to cutting them. Okay, we're set up. We had to do a little angle change here to give you guys a, uh, a better view of uh, what I'm doing. Uh, left to right and top to bottom when adding decals and the reason is uh, by working at the top and you put your uh, your micro set on and then your micro saw uh, these are done if I put them in on the bottom and then started working above them sometimes the chemical will run and if it runs it'll run under a decal that you just put in place and the decal will float and it'll move first thing we're going to cut out is uh, ease up do not hump we're going to cut out to, uh, one of these and we're going to get ready to, uh, to put it on. We've got this uh, sitting in the water right now. These are water slide decals, which means that you submerge them into water from anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds and they'll start to come loose. Now we're going to take our Q-tip 
and we're going to stick it into the micro set and we're just going to get it a little damp and now we're going to bring it over and we're going to put it where we want it and all we're going to do is just put a little dab on the box car here now I've got that applied I'm going to bring my decal over and I'm going to use my trusty pick and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the pick and I'm going to start moving it as you can see it's floating off there quite nicely so I'm going to bring it over here and then I'm going to slide the paper out from under it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pick to bring it into where I want it at and as you can see I've got too much solution on here so this is why I love the q-tips now I used one end of the q-tip to go into the micro set I'm going to use the other end of the q-tip to sponge this water off so watch how this just takes the water right away or the set solution off of it and it keeps the decal from floating and it allows me to work with it now you don't have to rush this but at the same time you don't have all day the more you mess with it the more it's going to want to break up so get it where you want it at in this case right here I've got it just about lined up I'm a little distance away from where it is so I'm going to lean in real quick just to make sure it's nice and straight. Alright, now that I've got it lined up, I'm going to take that same end again. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to weep the solution from around the edges. And there you go. I got it right where I want it at. Okay, now we're going to be putting these small letters for CSXT on this end of the box car. Alright. Now, I know that I'm going to put them right here in this area. So what I'm going to do is take my micro set and I'm going to swab the area, paint the area as I like to call it. And if the micro set runs away or it gets into a big blob, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's right there and you're good to go. Now I'm going to grab my first decal right near the edge. I'm going to take it over to the wire. Normally a 10 count will work, and while this decal is soaking, soaking, let me give you a hint. Always put the decal on the surface of the project car above where you want it to go. It's really hard to get these things to slide up, but it's really easy to get them to slide down. Alright, we're going to bring this out now and test it and see if it's ready to go. Alright, so again, we're just going to use our pick to test the area to see if the decal is loose. It's not loose enough, so we're going to go back to the water. Alright, so now, there we go. We're just going to lightly slide it off here. Be careful. Sometimes you can pinch the decal itself with your tweezers. Get it off. As soon as you can get it off, slide the paper out. And then start moving it where you want it to go. Now, while you're moving it, if it seems like it's meeting some resistance and it's not wanting to go where you want it to go, simply get some more micro set and paint it wet again. See how easy it'll move with the uh, Q-tip? And just get it to where you want it to be at. Now once I have it centered on these ridges and pretty close to where I want it to be at, I'll take the other end of the Q-tip and I'll weep some of the water out from under it. There you go. That's your CS. It's centered here between the ribs pretty equally. It appears to be level. So we're just going to go ahead and dab a little bit more out of it to get, the, uh, to get any ripples out of it and we're going to move on to the next one. So we'll go ahead and paint the next area that we're going to be working on.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and choose our numbers for this box car, and we're going to make them 130164. Now, notice as I said before, I work left to right and top to bottom. So now the CSXT is my uppermost label, so I'm going to go under it. Had I put the numbers on and then tried to do the CSXT, it's quite possible that the uh, solution could have rolled down and uh, run down and hit this and made these float. So we're just going to go ahead and paint all three of these areas right here. Okay, so we got our two numbers centered between this rib and that rib with a proper distance from the top, so they're good to go. We're going to check our solution. We're ready, and we're going to move on to the next one. If at any time you worried that your letters are not level, just use the straight edge that came on the decal paper and lay it right up at the bottom and look at it and you can tell whether or not they're level or not. Okay, so we've got this area now done. We're still working left to right and top to bottom. So we're going to move down here above the trucks and we're going to put in one of the smallest decals that you're going to find on this, uh, on this car. And uh, we're going to look at the diagram here, and the diagram says that it should go in here between the second ridges, and that's a, that's a good area, but it's going to be right here on this very small area, so we're just going to go ahead and paint this, and we're going to paint it good. Okay, as you can see, <laughs> there are like five letters on this decal. Five letters so, five words, but... All right, thanks for the comment to the video. <laughs> we're recording, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's Bertie with her two cents worth. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, this is very small. So the thing that you that you got to be careful about is when you're when you're pinching it with your tweezers to put it in the water, and then you bring it back over here to take it off. That you um, allow enough uh, area on the decal to hold the paper but don't break the decal in half. So we're in our water over here loosening. We got it set up. Bertie, if you will, go ahead and get in this area right here where the pick is. All right, so as you can see, it's coming off a little bit. And we've got it. And we're going to hold it. And we're going to slide the paper right out from under it. Since it's so small, it'll try to set up on you real quick. So get it where you want it. She's right there. I'm clear. <laughs> I'm not touching it anymore. Bertie, see if you can zoom in on it. It's already in as far as We're going to try to seep a little water out of it uh, and let it sit in without touching it. So we're just going to touch the edges of it with the Q-tip. And um, we're going to try to realign it right there where it needs to be at. And there you go. All right. Now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the door and um, all right on the door it calls for four different decals uh, one two three and four well <laughs> we're going to try to put them on there but uh, we are using a different door so we're going to see how this works and how it doesn't work so we're going to go ahead and put our set solution here and we're going to try to put this little we're going to try to put this little bitty decal right here in the center of the door well as luck turns out we're pretty centered so we're going to try to move it over to the right just a little bit the dry end of our q-tip we're going to support our hand 
and we're going to lay it on it and we're going to weep that stuff out and move it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is take it and fold it back down here, get it back in place. And we're uh, fortunately we're right where we need to be at, if not pretty close. And we're going to let it dry right there. Again, referring to our picture of the prototype, we have one decal that we've put on the other box cars that say door opening and these numbers to the side, but they were one decal. Looking at this door, I think it would be very hard to try to separate those decals. Okay, the decals are too small to try to separate, so I'm breaking my own rule here by putting something above another one. Uh, but we're going to leave them together and we're going to see if we can't slide them into this little spot right here. Alright, we got a boo-boo. As you can see, they sort of folded over on us. And that sometimes happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at it. And it floated in upside down, so that's messed up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come under it, scoop it out, get rid of it, and try again. Alright, so we messed that one up. Hey, it happens. Uh, that's why these uh, decals are pretty nice because they come with enough decals to do four boxcars. So we're going to try this again and um, we're going to see what happens. All right. It looks like we got. It looks like we got it in here. Uh, we're just going to take and make some small adjustments with the pick. Uh, we're going to try to center it. Looks like it's pretty centered. Now these are some clues too. If you can see this, use objects on the box car to help you. If you notice, we have this panel right here, which is normally where a waybill would be uh, posted. Uh, we're going to use that to help center up the decal. And now that we've got the decal in there where we uh, believe it is, uh, we're just going to use uh, a Q-tip to come in and suck some of the solution out from each side. And we're going to let it sit there. We have these, they've set up now, and I'm going to tilt them a little bit, and you can see, hopefully you can see from the shine right there that they've set in pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break out our microsaw. And what we're <coughs> going to do is tilt it up to where we can see the shine on it, and we're just going to come back, and we're going to paint them. And we're going to do it lightly until each decal is covered all the way over to the edges. Now, I do not like to do this immediately after I put the decal on because you run the risk of having the decal float on you and move around. This stuff softens the decal. So, you don't want to be moving it around while after you put this stuff on. And we're going to let it sit there for a few minutes. And then we're going to come back and we're going to use the Q-tip to weep the excess off of it so it doesn't mar the finish. So we're going to let this set for a few minutes. We're going to take a water break and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. So uh, what I wanted to show you here was that uh, we're just going to go in here now and we're going to rub our Q-tip around the edges of the uh, decals just to pull the excess uh, micro uh, saw off of it. And you'll notice right here I added a decal, that one that I forgot, and this is your classification. And we'll come back and we will put some micro uh, saw on that here when we're done. So now we're going to move down here to this end of the boxcar. And uh, if Bertie will focus in on the prototype up here on the computer, you can see that we're going to add the large CSX. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and paint our area to put the CSX in. We want it on this panel, so we're going to lay our finger on it. We're going to get it just by the corner. And we're going to pull the paper out. We're going to lift our finger straight up.
Okay, we're back. Um, went ahead and finished out this end. Had a little home project here that I needed to address. Remember what I said about hand cleaner and contaminants? Um, clean hands, not OCD or anything like that, but uh, anything that uh, is a foreign object and it comes in contact with your hands is going to come in contact with the labels, the water, the tools that you're using, or the surface that you're putting these things on. So clean hands, always nice clean hands. All right, now we've uh, went ahead and completed this side. Uh, Miss Birdie's going to zoom out and give us a full picture here of what we're working on in the end. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue working left to right. And what we're going to do is now we're going to concentrate on the end here. Basically all we're going to do on the uh, end of this car here is place the CSXT and the car number. And some micro set. I want you to take note of how small these numbers are run together. I've never seen anybody get so much information in a small space. And we got our label like we normally do. We're just pulling it off. We'll grab the paper, grab the end of the decal, and we'll slide it out. Alright, so we're going to take this guy here, we're going to strip him off. Now we got him there. Now we're just going to bring him in. Looks pretty good. Alright, so now what we're going to do is, you got to be real careful with these small ones. So I'm just going to come in here on the edge and try to weep any of the excess fluid out of it, or the chemicals out of it, without touching the decal. And how's that look, Bertie? Let me zoom back in. All right, looks good under the magnifying glass. It looks good. All right, so now you've seen us uh, decorate one end, and we've decorated the sides. I'll set this back down here. And what we're going to do now is um, we're going to head and apply our micro saw to this end and uh, let it sit for a little bit and then seat the uh, chemical off of it. Then we're going to flip it around to the other side, and uh, we're going to take care of that. So we'll do that, and we'll be right back. Hey, real quick, one last tip. Uh, now that we're done with this side and we're getting ready to go to the other side, um, and you turn it over and you've got your blank slate, uh, I, I started and then I forgot, I want you to notice the picture that I have on my laptop now. This is a picture of the other side of the car, the one side that we just did. It's, a, it's real easy now to use this picture as your prototype as a reference for where you want to put the labels on the car to keep from picking it up and turning it around and picking it up and turning it around all the time. Alright, so we're going to finish this up like we said before and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, uh, so we're done. Uh, we've got all of our decals on the sides and the ends. We've let it set up. Uh, you, uh, We've got everything good to go. We need to install the uh, catwalk on the top and as you can see it's rather pretty shiny right now and and there's a few little imperfections here around these logos if you can see them uh, but uh, the nice thing about the dull coat is it makes all that go away so what we're going to do now YouTube is we're going to take this out and we're going to give it a shot of uh, well actually what we're going to do is we're going to put the flooring back in it and we're going to put the trucks back on it and then we're going to give it a shot of dull coat and then we're uh, going to come back and uh, show you the results alright so stick around Alright, hey YouTube, uh, this is the final leg of this. As you can see, we've got the flooring and the frame and everything put back in. And I'm going to give everything a good solid uh, shot of uh, 1260 dull coat. A little bit on the trucks and the wheels. Alright. Hit the trucks. And you might say, oh my god, he's spraying the couplers. Well, that's true, I am. I'm giving them a dull coat as well. But after I take this back inside to let it sit, 
Uh, I'll wait about five or six minutes and I'll come in with a pair of tweezers and I'll operate the uh, coupler mechanism and it'll work just fine. Side, catwalk, I'm going to work on them grooves a little bit. Not a lot, a little bit goes a long way when we hit the ridges from all sides. All right, ta ra ra boom da I got mine today. That's why I'm walking this way. All right, cool. So we're gonna go eat some dinner, come back, and uh, hopefully she'll be done. Okay, well, here's the final product. As you can see, everything turned out really nice. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to focus in on that small label, uh, but I'll certainly give it a try. That's about as best as it's gonna let me focus. There's just too many things it's trying to focus on. Little look there at the ease up, don't hump number boards, door decals, and uh, that side. Got a little glare going on from the light up here, but uh, that's, your, um, that's your end cap there with uh, your numbers on it, and the other side. So uh, I'm gonna try to do a picture in picture of this one uh, so you have something to look at with the other one. I don't know if it'll work or not. And by the way, if uh, you've been following along, you, uh, you'll you know that I struggled with this one door uh, that didn't work. Uh, what I ended up doing was, um, deciding to leave it operational uh, it works pretty good uh, I went real light around the tracks here at the top and the bottom uh, to um, to to keep them from getting clogged up and um, I'm pretty happy with it well there you go YouTube I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it has inspired you to uh, try to make some changes to some of your your own locomotives uh, keep in mind that uh, the techniques that I use are not limited to HO you can use these on any scale model railroad uh, please uh, put any comments in the sections below. If you, uh, if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Um, other than that, uh, as always, rate, comment, share. Y'all take care. Bye.